And I will give you examples of each type of place and how we should respond to those types of places. The second type of place which we find is we find a place where you go to which there is a mixed character. You will find an element of good and you will find an element of evil in it. But we find that we need to go to those places because it is necessary to go to those places. And the third type of place which, the, which Allah SWT has created in the dunya are the pure places, the places where the parishtas, the places where the angels descend upon. These are those places which have been established solely for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, solely to be sanctified and upon which the rahmah and the sakinah, the tranquility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends 24 hours of the day. Like for example the masjid. Whether we are in the masjid or not, we find it is a place which cannot be defiled, which is sanctified all the time. The angels descend on this place all the time. So there are three types of places in the dunya. One is those places which are thoroughly evil, which have been built for an evil purpose, in order for evil to take place in there. The second type of place are the mixed places, where you need to go to those places, but there is a mixture of good and evil taking place there. And the third place are those places which have been built specifically for good to take place in those places. Let us look as an example as to the first type of place. What are those places which have been specifically built in order for, for wrong to take place to promote evil? Right? And incidentally you find that the West, for them, the, when you see the West, for them everything is, is democratic. Whether it uh, conflicts with the law of nature, whether it conflicts with the law of Allah, for them everything is democratic. So for example, something which conflicts with the law of nature, like for example, uh, gays and lesbian bishop, for example. For them it is okay because we say it's okay, so it's okay. So even if it goes against nature, so that's okay. Something which conflicts against uh, the law of Allah, for example, drinking, gambling, right? For them it doesn't really matter, so they can go in and burn those places and they can indulge in it. But for Muslims we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our tabiyat, our temperament to fit in with nature and to fit in with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Muslims don't uh, uh, build places which promote evil. And these are the following places. Places which are built specifically for gambling. Places which are built specifically for drinking. Places which are built specifically for prostitution. Places which are built specifically for certain wrong things to take place, like for example, the horse betting, the horse betting types of places. Places which were previously destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the previous nations. For example, the tribe of Ad, the tribe of Thamud, the tribe of Lut al-Islam, all these places have been condemned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran al We are not supposed to be even going near those places. Now, let me elaborate a little bit. The places which have been specifically built for haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al -Karim, that never mind going to those places, we don't even go near those places. And I have three verses in the Quran which speaks about evil places and the word is not going even near. The first verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, zina in the Allah ta'ala says they don't even go near zina, verily it is a shameless deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say in the Quran, Wala taf'alu zina. They don't indulge in zina. Because we all know zina is not, okay, you know, it is not something which we supposed to be doing, it's forbidden. It goes against the law of nature, it, against the, it goes against the law of your relationship, and it goes against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never mind indulging in the act. We don't even go near those acts. We don't even go near those acts. Now there are certain places which have been built specifically to promote these things. Gambling, for example. Gambling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about gambling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks about drinking. First, the Nimur bridges of Hanan Othan. Allah ta'ala says that these are filthy things. Allah ta'ala says in Surah al Fal, these are filthy things. We shouldn't even go near it. We should avoid it. So now we have certain places which are built specifically 
to promote these evils. And then we don't say that Muslims are going there to gamble, or we don't say Muslims are going there to drink, or we don't say Muslims are going there to do certain wrong things, but they are going there for maybe a conference, or they are going there for some other type of entertainment, they are going there for some type of futility. So now they are going there, and it is a place known for evil, it is a place known known for where the wrath of Allah SWT descends all the time. And we go there and we spend the three or four hours there and things of the sort and we're coming out from that place and not realizing that we have been tainted. So you go to Sunset, for example, on one wing there is a lovely camping house, there's a red district there and then on the other side we have conference facilities and a very great entertainment for the children, they have the way to go. So you have a scene how came also. You don't have to go to Pasur to tell for the scene. How came also were the scene in Wombats also I believe. They have that uh, resort. There's a lovely wave pool there, so you don't have to go all the way to Durban. You can just go to Walmart, you can go to Rustenburg, then you have a wave pool that you have the skin. They put salt also in there. Right? So you can feel you know, the salt in your mouth. You know? it, it gives a very good sensation that you there. So what happens is that you go to these places and you tell yourself that listen here, I'm not going to go and gamble, I'm not going to go and do the wrong things. I'm not, I'm not going to be seen in the bar at 12 o'clock at night. I'm just going for the sake of the children. You know, they like this wave pool, you know, it's a you sit there, or maybe my work organized a conference there, we're going there, and we are going to enjoy ourselves, but there is nothing wrong, you know what? I don't look at it in a very radical way, we'll do our thing and we'll come away. But not realizing we are going to a place which is known for the evil, it was built for the evil, and the Yahud have created these types of distractions for you to come there in order to be in this place, so when you're there, all the other temptations are around you. And I will give you an example, if you feel that I'm just speaking from, I'm just time sucking here, I'll give an example in the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how this actually took place. Once the Sahaba, along with Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, were returning from the Jihad, and they happened to pass by the ruins of Thamud. Now Thamud was one of the tribes of the previous nations of the Bani Israel, which was destroyed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala came down, and the Sahaba didn't even know where they were passing. When they passed by there, you see, it, it was desert. So, when you're traveling in the desert, the most precious commodity is water. Wherever you find water, you will stop there. Wherever you find water, you will stop there. You will even stop for a day there, and you will, you will camp out there, you will rest there, and then, then, and then from there you will proceed. So, the, the caravan was going, and they happened to pass by the, the ruins of the moon. It was an uninhabited place. People didn't even know it was the moon. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a Nabi, he received Wahi, and let me inform Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is a place which I have spoken about in the Quran, the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So anyway, before anything could happen, the Sahaba stopped and they said, hey, you know what, there's a well here. And there's some ruins here, you know, there's like type of huts and things of that sort. They can take shelter here in those huts, and there's a, a few wells here, we can, uh, we can, so we can uh, drink some water and we can refresh ourselves and then we can go. What the Sahaba did, they, they took the water out of the well, they started drinking, they started performing their ablution, they filled their water bottles up and they started making dough, they started making roti, you know, dough in order to make roti. And when the Surah was informed of this, Allah, Allah SWT informed the Surah that this is a place upon which my wrath descends. You should hasten away from here. The Surah immediately told the Sahaba, they had hardly settled down there. They were just about to, to start making themselves comfortable and camping out there. When the order came, the Surah told those people, move away from this place because the wrath of Allah SWT descended upon here. If the wrath of Allah SWT has to come again, has to come again, then our condition of the day of Tiyama, we don't know what's going to happen. Because we don't frequent places where the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. And what is more amazing of the story is that the roti, the dough, which 
the Sahaba made in order to bake the bread, in order to eat, Rasul said that dead bread and that water is not even fit for human consumption. That bread, that water is not even fit for human consumption. Take it and feed it to the animals. Take that dough and feed it to the animals and immediately you move away from here. Now the Sahaba just used that place to stop camping en route. Like how we would say that we now we're going for a lovely like outing, weekend outing, you know. We just want to relax, chill out a little bit, go with the children, things of that sort. Nothing, you know, there's no problem. You know, sometimes these these uh, these molinars, they just speak, you know, they, they don't know what is this, but they just speak, you know. But now this is from the example of the Suicide of how he treated the place upon which the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sits. In these places, undoubtedly, brothers, whether we like it or not, there's a predominance of evil in it. I don't say that, I don't say that there's a problem with swimming. No, there's no problem with swimming. In fact, it's not to swim. It's not to swim. But it's a place where you are swimming. The wrath of Allah subhanahu wa descends it. I'll give you another proof from the Quran. Whichever tribe Allah subhanahu wa wanted to destroy from the Bani Israel, the tribe of Lu, the tribe of Ad, the tribe of Tamud, for example, the tribe of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa always ordered the Anbiya, the Nabis, to the place. Whichever tribe Allah subhanahu wa wanted to destroy, Allah always commanded the Anbiya to the place. Because Allah subhanahu wa didn't want he inspires God fearing people to be in evil places. And if those people are in the society where the azab of Allah subhanahu wa comes, they will be raised with the evil things. And we don't want that to happen. If something happens, if an earthquake takes place there, for example, some natural calamity takes place there, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa descends there, we don't want to be counted amongst those people, amongst the gamblers and things of this sort. We, on the day of Yama, when we awake, we want to be in the company of the souls of the martyrs. We want to be in the company of the shohada of the martyrs. We want to be in the company of the pious, the muttaqin, the sikhiyatin, the truthful people. We don't want to wake up in our October next, next to us we find a person with a cigar in a mouth, and then the next to us is a, is a person with a wine glass, and the next person is a man and woman. So we don't want to wake up like that. Who wants to wake up like that? But we in places like that. So if we want to wake up like that, we're not supposed to be seen in places like that. So Allah Ta'ala grant us all the hidayat of understanding this. The Yahud are very clever. Today in the world, if you survey all the geological sites where the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa descended, there is no habitation there. It means people are not living there. But the Yahud have taken one place. That is a dead sea where Yud al-Islam was destroyed. The last the Subhanahu Wa caused this uh, a type of a, of a dam. They call it the Dead Sea, but it's actually not a sea. It's like a very dense river. And what they have done is, they have said that uh, they have made products from the Dead Sea. So they will tell you that the Dead Sea has got certain uh, the products from there. They are making cosmetics. They say, no, if you apply it to your skin, then it becomes more clear and dust and dead things of this sort. They have made it into a tourist destination. They have made the Dead Sea, the place where Azab of Allah SWT came, into a tourist destination. But the, the Muslims, the Muslims, we don't think like how the Yahud think. We are attracted to places where the Rahmah of Allah SWT comes. We don't go to places where the wrath of, of, of Allah SWT descended and then, and then still promote it. We're not, even supposed, we're not even supposed to be going to places like that. Yes, we're supposed to read about it in the Quran, we're supposed to be reading about it in the history books, but we don't go to those places as a tourist destination. Yes, if we feel you, if we want to take lessons from it, then we can maybe just pass it. So when we see it, when we see, when we see how those places were destroyed, then our heart should be awestruck as to how Allah SWT destructed them. Because those places are meant and have been preserved for us to take lessons from. But we don't go and make those places a tourist destination. The place which Allah SWT condemns, we don't do those places for for entertainment. We are not grant us the understanding. The second place which we get is the mixed gathering places. And the, the foremost example of this is the morals. Right? 
we have to go to the mall. I'm not going to tell you, hey, listen here, because uh, there's a lovely uh, sales lady there. She's walking around in a lovely mini skirt. You mustn't go there. Or if you went to Mendon because there's a lovely cinema there and things of this sort, you mustn't go there. No. Sometimes if it's a special at checkers, a ticket, whatever it is, you need to go. A lot of people, their rosy is from there. They have businesses in the malls. They have to go there. But it is a place of mixed temptations. You find the good, you find the evil thing. And along with the malls, we find literature, for example, magazines. Magazines. From amongst the magazines, you'll get certain magazines which are known to be evil. You get the Playboy, you get the FHM. You go to any shop nowadays, you know, those years, when I was a little boy, they used to put these new magazines right on top. You couldn't even see it. Now they put everything I level. So even if you, if you don't want to see it, then you see it. Then you go to some uh, 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 places, you find that the FHM Museum, and then next to it is Muslim Woman Magazine. Muslim Woman, and then you get FHM. Now, how does it work? We don't, we don't mix filth and, and purity in this way. We, it has to be completely distinct. So you find we need to, we have to sometimes read a newspaper, we have to read a magazine. Nowadays, we have to use the internet. Because a lot of people have to check the email, they have to check the news there. Some, uh, some people are ardent uh, cricket followers, you need to check the update and the score, things of this sort. But there's also a lot of temptation there. So what I'm saying, places which has mixed characteristics of good and evil, those places we need to be there according to the degree of necessity. According to the degree of necessity. And even the shopkeepers, even if they have a shop in the mall, at night they're not sleeping in the shop. They're only conducting in the daylight like hours, they're conducting the business. At night they're going home. Likewise, magazines, you're looking for an ad, there's a lovely article there, things of that sort. You look what you're looking for. You're not going to open up, for example, uh, the Star newspaper, and then instead of uh, going, uh, instead of just reading the news, you'll go straight to that section to specify, you know, you want to check up some numbers. No, you're not going to do that. You're interested in a certain article, something happened in a certain country, you need to know what's happening, you read it, and you must be very critical also of the Western media because 99% is lies. Right? But in any case, if you need to see it, look at it, and then you close it and you put it away. So these are the mixed uh, places which has a mixed characteristic. Those places you only go to the degree of necessity. And if there's conferences there, things of this sort, you go there and you do your work and you come away. If you have conferences and entertainment in places which are known for, for evil, you try to abstain, you try to change the venue. Places where there's a degree of necessity, you go there to, uh, to the degree of necessity and as soon as you come out from there, then it's over. You don't make these places uh, uh, a place where you frequent all the time. And then lastly, I see my time is up also, are those places where we're supposed to be most of the time. Unfortunately, we Muslims, we, we reverse it. The places where we're not supposed to be, we're there most of the time. And the places where we're supposed to be there, we're there, we hear least of the time. And undoubtedly, the places which are the most pure are the masjids. We have to be in the middle, we need to be spending most time in the masjid. Because the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in the masjid. In the masjid, nobody would even think of having a, 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 like a musical show here, for example. Because it would be from in the masjid. Nobody would have an entertainment center here next to the masjid. Uh, tomorrow, if somebody wants to, uh, here next door, he wants to put up a bottle store next to the masjid here. Every, I'm sure every Muslim here will doubt, will, will object to say, you know what? The masjid is a house of purity. How can you have a bottle store? Rather go five blocks down the line and do all your filthy things, etc. Masjid is a pure place. Madrasas, the Darul rooms, the Hanka, the Shuyu, the pious people, those are the places and the people whom you have to be associated with. And even if you are, uh, even if you feel that you are not a good Muslim, but if you are in a good place, and if you have to die in those places, you find that when you are raised on the day of Qiyama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you for the pious ones. And as I said in the starting of my bayan, the original and the culmination of our life's work is how we die. We have to be, we have to leave this world in a, 
in a pure place and they have to leave this world in the company of the pure people. Because then on the day of Qiyamah, although Allah SWT may not look at us, but you look at our neighbor, you look at our neighbor. In the dunya also we follow this example. We have the masjid here and a person living next to the masjid, the value of his house will, will double immediately. Why? Because the masjid is prestige. Imagine if the masjid is prestige to your physical property. Imagine spiritually on the day of Qiyamah, how much more prestigious it will be. May Allah Ta'ala grant us all the talking to the light and the understanding. Wa akhidu da'wana. for 2012, which will inshallah be carried out in the Bihar district of India at a price of 150 rand per kurbani, which includes all costs. Please contact me or our head office at 330 Kamai Street. I will also be coming around. Chazadna.